I have I have no idea. I I'm try, I'm gonna try to make it short as possible. <laughs> okay, yeah, you said you tired. Yeah, well, you know how it go. I always want things to go short, but that ain't always how it, it turns out to be. Mm-hmm. Plus, when you well, in, that's good. I like the long. One. Yeah, plus when you start interacting with with people, um, mm-hmm. you know, it just starts longer than than you think it's supposed to be. Oh, right. Well, brother, well, brother, well, brother, well, brother, well, brother, well, yeah. I'm gonna get off a little earlier because uh, I, I need to make a couple of ends. Uh, uh-huh. I can always can I always call back in in case y'all spill on? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Okay. Matter of fact, we live right now. I'm just we just letting it let the time go. People get a chance to oh, see yeah. that we live, and uh, I don't have to. Right. Only got like four minutes to officially start. Uh, yeah, brother, I like the way you and that sister was uh, snapping on uh, what was his name. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, last night, man, y'all was snapping on that. <laughs> he, he, he needed to be put in check. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a homo Negro now. Mm-hmm. I'm a homo right, Negro, right. so, you know. Hey, what's up there, twin? <laughs> and, and that other, and that other the homo Negro person in your ethnicity yeah, I had to step in on mm-hmm. that one because that, that was very disrespectful, first yeah. of all. Mm-hmm. The way he came at you, you, you know, and he don't even know you. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Nope. Hey, you know, well, hey, how you doing? I'm good. Nice to meet you. I'm so excited. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Yeah, that was very disrespectful. I watched it after you all did it live. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know, the homo Negro, the homo Negro came out. Hey, what's up there, Leon? I like that term, homo Negro. Homo Negro. That's a scientific term. That's the scientific term we made up. (laughs) Oh. Yeah, we still here. Oh, okay. Come back in the hey, Karen, so, hey, hey, Karen, so you say you stay near uh, Philly? Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember you putting that on, on the comment section. That's my opinion. Yeah, I know it's another brother uh, from Philly that I talked with back from out that way. Uh, brother Tyleek, you know him, his name, Brother Daniel. And uh, he used to make it, but. Uh, he lives somewhere right across the river from Philly, over there in Jersey. Uh, he, he lives around that. Yeah, he lives in that around in that area. He told me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right somewhere around in that. It's more from It's about twenty-five minutes away. I feel like it's about thirty minutes away. Yeah. Yeah, boy, Philly, Philly, Philly is a is a monster, is, is a animal within itself. <laughs> boy, Philly, <really> something else. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, he told me a lot about, quite a bit about Philly. You know, when, when I already had knew, you know, but yes, yeah, Philly, ooh, it's off the chain. <laughs> oh, I have a lot of stories that took place in Philly. 
Oh, okay. Well, that's good. A lot of good. <laughs> Are you originally from Philly or Jersey? No, I'm originally from Ohio. Okay. Okay, so part of Ohio. Actually, yeah. You know what? When I grew up in the uh, metropolitan New York City area in Manhattan, I was raised with a brother from Philly back in the eighties. Oh, yeah. yeah, his name is Charles Marshall. I don't know him. I don't yeah, know him. I have it. Philly. I mean, from Akron. Akron. Oh, from Akron. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah wow. Because I'm sorry, go yeah, ahead. Because I'm originally from Michigan, right? But my family, uh, you, you know, they hey, asked me from there. And, uh, sorry, hey, how you doing? Uh, All right. Good, good. How's everybody? Hey, uh, hey how you doing? I'm okay, I'm okay. Thanks for your donation. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, yeah you saw the logo, uh, Rashida. Huh? Huh? So, so the Lord. Oh, I know what it is. Uh -huh. I'm low. I need to turn my speakers up. Oh, yeah. I turn my speakers down. Yeah, Terry. So, uh, yeah, yeah we were, we, we, okay. yeah, yeah. so we were kind of close, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I had, uh, we hadn't really been around each other that much, but, you know, we had got close within that short span of time. That's why I remember him, you know? Yeah, he's from out of Oh, look, maybe he's listening. <laughs> All right, yeah. Aaron. <laughs> All right. All right, there, brothers and sisters. We ready to get started. Okay. Huh? Never mind. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go ahead and get this party started. Do what we got to get that. Hell out of die. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever, and always welcome to another edition of what I call the Reality Temple on Earth. Hey, brother, tell if you got a lot of background or you chewing on something or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right, brother. I'm yeah. all right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just uh, leaning over because on my side, uh, like around my solar plexus, it's kind of hurting, but it's okay. all good. Well, you know, you can mute your phone unless you want to talk. <clears throat> um. Welcome to this special edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Um, I call it Soul Liberation Day. <clears throat> I'm the host, Gay Kids Program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the Mighty Angel Snow Number Seven. I am. I am also your uh, Soul Brother Number One. There we go. Can't see me. Okay. Uh, let's get this party started. Uh, I want to introduce our guest and uh, Brother Gary. Uh, he should be here before it's my turn to talk. <clears throat> and uh, but I would like to introduce everybody on the panel. Uh, of course, the ladies first, uh, one for one. If you want to say a little something, 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 take 10, 15 minutes, you can do that. The people just say hi to the people if you if you know I would like for you to do that and then we can just move on and uh go on to the rest of the program and and be out. <laughs> I just think I want to say I thank you so much everybody for being here and I really appreciate it. Uh brother Quinn, brother Leon is in the in the chat room. This broadcast is being simulcast on Facebook. So um I hope that we can just come together here, have a few good words, and have a nice time here. Um, I want to be. Uh, I want to introduce, of course, to start the program off, our, our sister Nova Levine. Hey, and she's right here, <laughs> right here by my side, yeah. as usual for the last uh, few days. And if my sister just want to say a few words, or whatever, and if she wants to, to something to inspire us, 10, 15 minutes, sweetie, if you want to. You get out of religion. <laughs> That's my advice to everybody. Please get out of religion. It's not good for us as a people. Religion, period. At this point, we, we do not need Christianity. We don't need Islam. We don't need Judaism. 
We don't need Hebrew Israelism at this point because we're in a dire situation. I want liberation. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, liberation from the system of racism and white supremacy. And religion is not gonna help us to be liberated as a people. You know, I'm not a great public speaker. This, that's his job. I'm not a great public speaker. I, I'm, that's just my advice to you know everybody that, that's listening to us today. Okay, I'm not one of those people that like to talk a lot, but I do love to write, okay? <laughs> I love to write. So with that being said, I'm gonna give it over back to Brother Talib. Talib? <laughs> to leave. Brother Tony, Brother Tony. Okay. 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 It's okay. Well, well actually, uh, actually, Brother I, to live, she meant me. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, yes. With due respect, proceed, brother. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> we, we're doing ladies first. And I'm so happy to also for the I think this is the third year in a row. My my sister Rashida Strober, the world's first dark skin activist. Sister Rashida, you are in the house, right? I am. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. Glad yeah. to see my, my sister Rashida is, is in the house. So uh, I'm passing the mic to my sister Rashida. If you got, if you just want to say hi, sister Rashida, or give us 10, you know, 10, 15 minutes of some of that darkism, dark activism thing, you know, let's, 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 <laughs> let's do that. Let's do it. Okay. Do it. Some of that positivity. All right. Thank you. I'm first of all, say, um, uh, I'm honored to be a part of uh, this again um, for, like you said, a third year in a row. Yes, ma'am. I'm happy to see what the dark skin activist movement is all about. A black man here on with a dark skin woman. That's uh -huh. I'm happy. Uh, so I want to say with that, shout out to Sister Nova, a, a natural hair dark to me. Because <laughs> uh, it, it goes a lot. It goes along with what I'm you know, what I'm all about, what I'm advocating for is to bring the black man back to the dark skinned black woman in balanced numbers. And that just means I know that not all black men are going to date or marry exclusively dark skinned women. But the growth um, that I see here in terms of dark skin activism is I'm happy to see you both on together. That speaks volumes to me. I like seeing black men and black women together, particularly, I'm not gonna lie, People could be mad. I like seeing black men with dark skinned black women. Uh, nah. I want to quickly say a shout out to my uh, son, Raheem, who's um, developing quite finely intellectually. And he sent me a text today and he talked about the toxic psyche of black people. And I was like, <laughs> that's how he defined it 21 years old. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, how black people interact with each other. And so, what I want to say. I think that Soul Liberation Day is a part of even if we even if we don't all agree because obviously we're not going to all agree. But I think that Soul Liberation Day is a part of dismantling the, as Raheem put it, shout out to you, Raheem, the toxic psyche of black people because the sister talked about um, uh, Sister Noble said she she wants to be liberated, and I understand exactly what you're saying from this system of racism and white supremacy. And the oppressor is definitely not going to do that. So mm -hmm. it, it, one of the things that we have to do is we have to find a way to dismantle. The, and it's, it's going to be, I'm not going to sit here and pretend this is easy, but we have to mm -hmm. find a way to dismantle the toxic psyche of black people. Because I think that that's just the solution. The solution lies with black people, but we got to learn how to, and I'm, I'm, I'm still learning myself. I'm still uh working on it shout out to dr neely fuller he always say i'm still learning yeah I, i'm uh, me too i'm still learning how to do that because i think that that's one of the things that um racism came in white supremacy came in and um sort of i don't want to say it destroyed it but it put like a it kind of took us back in terms of how is it that we work with each other i think the civil rights movement uh, bless the people that fought for that. But I think that the civil rights movement was a part of dismantling how black people work with each other because before the civil rights movement and after slavery and during reconstruction, oh, black people was on it. We were working with each other with no problem. But mm -hmm. then civil rights come along and then we, you know, we, we can um, go to white colleges and white establishments and et cetera. And now you, all of a sudden you, you start to see black people 
kind of pulling back from each other in socioeconomic ways where we should have continued to build. So for me, it, it is all about um, uh, bringing black people together. And I think for me, the, probably the main way that that is done is the black man coming back to the, the black woman in general and the dark skinned black woman in particular, and then building from there. Um, so thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, it's an honor, Sister Rashida, always, always. And make sure all those in the listening audience, those on my Facebook, those in the listening audience, make sure that you uh, subscribe and become a Facebook friend of Rashida Strober. She's very easy to find because she's the only one and the original. Uh oh, don't get me started now. I'm, try, I'm being nice and calm today. I ain't gonna get started. I ain't gonna cut <laughs> none of that. I'm gonna be nice and calm today. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be nice and calm myself. Somebody, somebody was on my case yesterday. You guys are always negative and blah blah blah. I'm going. This this is the day I'm going to try to be, you know, a little not so hard on folks today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to funny. I'm gonna try to keep my cool, all right. Yeah. For today, okay, today. So that was the I'm gonna I'm finna send my son. I think he'll he will really enjoy this. I'm gonna send him the link. Sorry okay. to to this. Now. He's texting me back and forth, going on and on. So I think he would probably enjoy this black power discussion here. So let me send this link to him right now. Well, actually, it's soul power, Sister Rashid. This, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> it's actually soul power. There we go. And I'm going to put the link in the chat room to the YouTube. So you can go to the YouTube, watch the YouTube video. Okay. So that was our sister. I want to thank her. It's an honor. Three years in a row, my sister Rashida been here. And yeah. sister Rashida, you got to stay with me. I don't care how mad we get and, and blah, blah, blah. We going to stay together. I'm with you, sister. And we going to be, we going to do this. Hey, hey, listen, I go through it. I've been going through it people for years. That's nothing to me. I all go right. through people all the time. It's, and we, we go out to eat. We can go out there and sit down and have a meal together. That's right. That's I, right. I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm bothered by that. Trust me. I think yeah. that uh, disagreement and conflict is good. No yeah. one's gonna agree all the time. If we're all agreeing, I don't think that's what a growth is. Absolutely. I mean, you know, conflict comes, uh, uh, growth comes from conflict to me. And it also shows our maturity. Right, right. It shows our maturity. And uh, our sister, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson said, that is something that the so-called Negro in America, and they never really talk about it because most of these people are childish. They are talking, she's talking about so many of us out there we have a problem. We're not mature in the mind. Mm -hmm. And Sister uh, Wilson always used to talk about that, our mm -hmm. immaturity. And we're going to have to start learning how to grow up here because if we can't grow up and, 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 and do this thing, act like an adult, we're not going to get out of this situation because it's going to take a man to deal with this situation. Boys and girls, and that's what the Pecklewood always call us, you know, for decades, generation. Mm -hmm. Boys and girls, he call us boy, he call us girl. Boys and girls are not going to be able to deal with this. It's going to take real men and women to get us out of this situation. So again, I thank the uh, Sister Rashida, so Sister Rashida for being here. The dark-skinned activist, she's probably going to have to, to leave a little early, but I really appreciate her, her being here. Thank you so much, Sister Rashida. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, brother, uh, oh, yes, sir. And uh, well, brother, 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 you got to go? Brother Charlie, but yeah, I got to go and make a couple of hands, and I'll be right back, so okay. I'll call in. All right. All right. So uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, Brother Gary just came in. Matter of fact, uh, just want to acknowledge Brother Gary is on the, on the line here. But before we get to Brother Gary, bring him online, I want to introduce everybody to a new a new person to our platform, a longtime listener, and uh, one of my favorite people, Sister Karen. Sister Karen? Yes, I'm here. Thank you so much, Brother Polly, for having me. Peace to the panel. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for having me. 
<laughs> yeah, so we got sister. You know Kim. what I want to say? Um, yeah, go ahead, sorry. sister. Yeah, go ahead. It's your time. <laughs> Bro. You know what I want to say, real brief. It was very brief, and um, then I just, you know, uh, I look forward to hearing what everyone else has to say. I, I just think we have a problem being distracted, and I know we've talked about this in our community. We, we just need to stop allowing these white folks to distract with these reality shows and the music and the sex and the, mm. the drinking and the material from the rims and the pocketbooks and focus on your family. Try to get up underneath this mess that we're dealing with. It's a mess. Why are we allowing ourselves to get distracted by Popeye's chicken sandwiches, mm -hmm. this rap music? It's a mess. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing what's going on, the negativity on this YouTube, on social media. I didn't realize how many brothers hated Sisters, oh, yeah. you know, mm. I started watching YouTube. It's very upsetting. It's very hurtful. Mm. It's very hurtful personally. The attacks on the single moms, on just black women, period. It's just very upsetting. And we just need to stop allowing, you know, and there's too many followers. Mm. Nowadays, you got too many damn sheep out here. But you know what? That's all I wanted to say for right now. <laughs> and um, again, thank you for having me, y'all. Hello again, everybody on the panel. You're welcome. You're welcome. Most certainly. And I, I appreciate it. It's also an honor to have you here on the platform with us, Sister Karen. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Hope that you come back and see us again sometime. Definitely. <laughs> that was our Sister Karen. And uh, last but not least, oh, what happened to him? <laughs> what happened to Brother Gary? Uh-oh. Hmm. Ah, yeah, he dropped. Okay. He was just there a second ago. Okay. Well, I guess as they say, the show must go on. But we are being simulcast on Facebook and YouTube. And I appreciate everything. Appreciate everybody being here. Those who are here now and those who will listen to this broadcast uh, at a future day. <clears throat> so brother, the brothers, the brothers went out on me. Talib gone and Gary gone. <laughs> See, the sisters are always with me. I can always depend on the sister. <laughs> they, they probably, he probably just pulled up, got a disconnection or something. But. Probably so. Who knows where he's at? Cause uh, you know he drives trucks yeah, like I do. He exactly. got a bad connection or something. I don't, he was he was there. He's gone. But uh, so that that only leaves me so, to say what I gotta say. We get out of here. <clears throat> the the topic that I chosen, if I can remember myself, cause as I get older, I get more senile. <clears throat> Uh, that black people should try freedom. You might like it. I want to say first that it's an honor to talk to all those on my platform and all those in the chat room and, and uh, Facebook and those who are uh, listening now in the audience and those who will listen to this broadcast later on. I really appreciate you. This year, it's been <laughs> hilarious, really. It's been hilarious. But I look forward to you being here with me uh, today and hopefully maybe years uh, beyond. Um, unfortunately, being 50-some years old, I don't have a lot of time left. I really don't. I don't have a lot of time left. And... For me to come to you today, I could be out somewhere with Sister Noble, we could be doing whatever, but I decided to come here and share my time and share some of my life with you and share some words of my experience of my 50 some years mm. to bring you help, especially since I'm a person, even from a child, I was always, what they say, inquisitive. My mother told me when I was a, 
a very young child, she said, you ask so many dang questions, even as a child. I wanted to know. If you don't ask questions, how are you going to know? How does that work? Why are you doing this? My mom said, why are you go? Well, you shut up. Got time to answer my question. And then I remember when my baby sister was born, I told my mother, and I even remember this, where did that come from? Talk about that's my sister. Sister what? What is that? And then my mother told me a lie. She said that she got this baby out the cotton field. And I said, uh, see, now I've been in the cotton field many, many times myself. And I ain't seen no babies running around in the cotton field. I didn't want to call my mom alive, but I'm like, you did something about this don't sound right to me. <laughs> but that's what she told me when I was a child. She got that baby out the cotton field. I'm looking at my mama, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, sure. You got the mom, baby out the cotton field. So I've always been inquisitive. I always ask questions. And my asking questions always get me in trouble because some folks, and see, this is the thing about it. If you don't like questions, I'm not talking about to act, uh, antagonize, antagonize somebody, to harass somebody. I mean, you genuinely want to know. Now, I have people come to my uh, platform, and I'm very sure Sister Rashida deals with the same thing all the time. You have yeah. a lot of folks, they're not coming to ask you questions and inquiry trying to learn where you're coming from. They are coming there to, to harass you and to bother you. It's not you know, to stalk you. It's not really to learn anything. It's right. to, to bother you. But that's not what I, that's not my intent. I want to know. And at 56 years old, I did not experience this whole 50 some years old and come to you and you do not see a fool before you. I'm not stupid. There's things I don't know. There's things I would never know. But I'm not a fool. I've experienced some crap in my 50-some years that you shouldn't have to go through. I'm trying to show you so that you can be better to go through what I did. But with each generation goes by, they go. They keep falling in the same holes. They don't learn a damn thing. They go through the same stuff, the same doing the same thing. They don't listen to those who came before them. And also, and this is a fact, and the younger people are correct when they say just because you're an older person don't mean that you're wise. That's true. Because there are some, some silly, silly folks that's my age that's out there running around. There's no doubt about it. I'm not presenting that to you. I know I'm not presenting that to you because even as a child, my maturity level was high, even as a baby. I wanted to know. Even as a child, I was born and raised at towards the end of the Jim Crow era. And I saw things. I pressed things by myself. Do you know I was a little boy, eight, nine years old, protesting against certain things and the adults would not help me? They would not help me. My mom would not help me, grandmother, grandfather, uncles. They let a little boy stand up because they wanted me to pledge allegiance to this country in school. When I was going to school, it was mandatory that you pledge allegiance to the flag. I said no. And I said no because of what this country had done to my ancestors and what's currently doing. What the hell I'm going to stand up to my pledge allegiance to the flag? I done it by myself. But my mother did support me because when they came to her, Oh, boy, the allegiance to the flag. And she said, my boy, if that's what he want to do, then that's what he's going to do. So my mother, she supported me in that way. And they just left me the hell alone. I'm a juvenile. <laughs> you know, these adults trying to attack a, a, a baby, really. But I knew I did not want to pledge allegiance to this flag. So I'm not a fool. And there are things that I have experienced. And I've always been a person that thinks for myself. Even as a child, I questioned religion. Even as a child, there were so many things that I questioned. But, you know, as a baby, you just don't know. So as a child, as a baby, you have you don't have no experience of life. Hell, I'm only eight, nine years old. What, what do I know? I don't know any too much of nothing. So, but as I grow older and I begin to experience things more and start getting certain information, 
then certain things, then these things began to reveal themselves to you. They was, it was always there, but I was not exposed to it. It took time. So I've done the time. You don't have to do the time. I've already done it. I have too. Yeah, you don't have to do the time. And you can go on to do greater and better things. You have things this year that's, that's holding you back. But I'm happy that my sister Rashida is here and sister Karen and my sister Noble, those, all of you, the brothers, it's an honor. It's been an honor this year to have you as company by my side this, 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 this year, this here year. I'm very um, happy, especially my sister Noble has made me very happy this year. Uh, that she's been able to, for us to come together and keep me company this year. It's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, relationship. And um, all of you, all of you, it is you who make this platform so strong. There's no other platform on this YouTube or social media stronger than us. All of you are special. Like I told you last night or the night before, it is our mindset, it is our mentality. If things are gonna change for the so-called Negro in America, so brothers and sisters, it's us. There's nothing gonna come, it's not this, I'm not trying to down nobody or, or whatever, it's just you don't have the right, you don't have the right mindset for what needs to be done. You're not seeking the correct information that we need in order to change this condition. I don't know, brother. I think a lot of us gonna die. It's a I mean, possibility. We're gonna die just like this in this condition. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm 45 years old. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a whole lot of years left. Yeah. Okay. I know it. I'm not looking really to be honest with you. I'm not looking to live till my 70s. You know what I mean? I'm just gonna be honest. Not not in this bullshit. No, I don't want to be here in this bullshit until my 70s. Mm -hmm. Dying of cancer. Dying of heart attack, having all kinds of strokes, mm. can't walk, mm. and still living in this system? No. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real with you. And that don't mean I'm suicidal. It don't mean I'm going to go out and, you know, get a gun and blow my brains out. It don't mean I'm, I'm going to drink, you know, some damn NyQuil and, and commit suicide. <laughs> that, that don't mean that, okay? I don't want to scare y'all, okay? Don't think I'm going to commit suicide. I'm just saying. I don't, I really don't want to be here in my 70s. Hmm. Okay. Not under this bullshit. No. No. I understand. Yeah, so, oh, I understand. I understand. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah. Polluted air. Yeah. Polluted water. Living like this. You can't walk in your neighborhood with your own people. One of these young persons robbed you for the few dollars you have in your pocket. You can't drive your car and you have to wonder if you get pulled over by a police officer, how is this going to turn out? Because you know what the deal might be. I'm so happy also because as you know, I've really been going hard in on religion and spirituality. I've really been going hard on um, uh, pro-blackity black, comedic, Hebrew is alike, more, all that blackity black stuff. And now my subscribers have come look like to a to a certain point where I, I'm not growing <laughs> and and but I'm not also it's not reduced. It's like at a I've got rid of all the riffraff. I got rid of all that stuff. I don't need you to be because I'm not here to feed your fantasy. I'm not here to bring you feel-good rhetoric. We're gonna keep it real or nothing at all. So, so I'm pretty sure they come by now and then and visit and watch, whatever. I'm glad you're gone. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Because I'm still going to continue to go hard on religion and spirituality. I'm still going to go hard on that blackly black stuff because it's weeds and it all needs to be cut down so that you we can move forward. It's stopping you from going forward. That stuff might make you feel good. Mm -hmm but it's stopping you from being the best you that you can be. You might not be able to comprehend that, but those who come here understand 
exactly where I'm coming from. Because they've broken, they've gone, their minds have gone beyond the religion, the spirituality, and these black scholarship, blackity black, these fantasy black teachings where we live some type of utopian life prior to the races, which no recorded history supports. Africans always been fighting and killing each other and, and war or whatever, always been abusive to women, and they're still doing it right now. I don't know where all this utopia, every, everybody was beautiful and happy, and that world don't exist, never have. Recorded history, all y'all scholars with the information, you don't never can, you can, you cannot show, except in your belief that there was a time when melanated people lived this beautiful life where they had no type of problems. And the problem started when the white man showed up. I want to try to be a little nice today. Like Sister Rashida said, I'm trying to stay, I'm trying to stay a little. <laughs> I'm gonna try to stay a little cool, comic luck -like today. Mm -hmm. just, just a little day. What I notice is when I try to be nice, they still hate me because I'm still gonna tell the truth. I'm still gonna be me. I'm not gonna change what I present on this platform. So they still hate me. So what's this of being nice? <laughs> you know, what's this of being nice to somebody they still gonna hate you? So the hell with it. I've tried to be nice. I've tried to, to work with, you know, religious folks, and and I, I tried to, to, to consider their feelings over their religion and their spirituality. And I tried to do the same thing with the pro blackity black folks. And I tried to be nice and try to be sensitive. I, I try to hold my tongue to a certain point. They don't want you to speak about their beliefs and ideas at all. So, so their brotherhood, their sisterhood comes with strings attached. In order for me to be your friend, I have to kiss your ass. I'm the angel snub number seven, not gonna do that. You can take your happy ass with your two legs and go on about your business on down the road somewhere, because I don't do that. You don't have to kiss my backside to be my friend. I respect you for who you are. You respect me for who I am. You have a religion or an idea or something that you put in the public trying to convert people to whatever, that's up for grabs. I should have the right to talk about it, just like anybody else. Because you do it. You talk about a belief or an idea or whatever you see out in the public. You talk about it. But I thought we was cool. We are cool. I should have the right to, put, to, to talk about something that you put out in the public. You can come here and speak about the Mississippi campaign or whatever I say, the only thing I want to do is say, ah, <laughs> you silly, and, and let's roll. We still rolling together. Well, what I want to say, if I can interject real quick, is what I what I can respect about you, even though we have disagreed on things, but I don't mm -hmm. care about disagreeing. What I respect about you is your passion to continue. Because a lot of people, they get distracted, they stop, they come up with all kinds of excuses. But this is something that if you look back at our great ancestors, people that I have reverence for, people like Nat Turner, T Harriet Tubman, um, Malcolm X, and even Martin, that were willing to go the extra mile and die for their belief. They had that staying power. And to me, that's what I, I look for consistency. It, that, to me, can tip me over to to look at your views and go okay well maybe i could i need to take a closer look at this because of the consistency factor that you have and i watched you um before you even knew me and i was like i remember you was talking about polite i was, i watched this one video about 10 times i was dying laughing i was like oh my god i know you weren't trying to be funny but right. like the most hilarious i was like oh my i was i was dying I don't. I've, I've I tried to since find that video, but I can't find it. Yeah, you were just going in, and it was so funny. Oh my! I know you wasn't trying to be. I know I'm, I'm not saying, but you can't help how people gonna react to what you right, say. Absolutely. It was just like so crazy in that level. That this was probably around like six years ago. Was it? It was five, six years. It's been a while. Hmm. I was like, this dude here is off the chain. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> So it's the point that I'm making is that level of consistency. You got to keep tearing in at it. You can't get out of the line because 
you're getting pushed around or things not going your way. You have to keep pushing and fighting. Okay. And, and, and believe me, Sister Nova, let me tell you something. Your words resonate with me like crazy. She said, she said, I don't want no part of it. I feel the same way. <laughs> Actually, I know it may be hard. And, and it's not about being suicidal. You know? I know. It's, it's the a, 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 a feeling that you have because of the situation, the condition that you're living in. Yeah. So it's unnatural. Unlike people walk around smiling and happy. Yeah. People, yeah. They're dumb. They don't realize what the hell is going on. Exactly. When you wake up and you see what's going on, you're going to feel uncomfortable and you're going to look for escapes and you're going to say, you're going to, you're going to, because I feel the same way. Yeah. But, you know, uh, back to uh, Brother Talik, it's, it's the, it's the fight that I like in people. I like people that fight. I don't know. I just, if, if <laughs> something, just keep getting up and punching. Like, don't, yeah. I love that. And that level of consistency is, is what I, I could say I respect because you, have definitely had an impact um on a lot of people with yeah. what you have been doing so i just wanted to interject and say that real quick i'm sorry to cut you off i just had to hop no that's, that's 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 fine sister rashida yeah i mean he definitely has an impact on a lot of people a lot of people you know and i do appreciate his his toughness his fight you know him not giving up him just you know, going forward moving right. forward with this mississippi campaign because a lot of people would have just gave up by now you know, they would have looked at their view counts and took that under consideration. Ain't nobody watching my videos mm -hmm. and blase, blase. And they would have just stopped talking about it and just went on with their merry lives and, you know, lived happily ever after, <laughs> if that is even possible, which I doubt. Right. As, you know, not as, you know, us being in this system. No, I don't think we can ever live happily ever after in a system like this, you know, so... Uh, you know, thank you for your words. You know, I really appreciate it. Oh, wow. I almost feel like closing. Y'all. Don't, do don't do that. Oh, no, don't do that. Come on, now we're only 42 minutes into it. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Rashida. No, of course. And Sister Noble, y'all can come in anytime you feel like. Oh, brother, brother. Yeah. While we getting this break, I can get my brother, get his yeah, words yeah, in here. Yeah. Brother Gary. Brother Garrett, he can't. I wonder if he can hear me. Well, he's there. Yeah. yeah. Brother Garrett, can you hear us? Okay. Well, we are gonna keep rolling. He's there. Yeah. He can break in. I think a lot of um, mm. before you say that. Yeah. I'm gonna say this. I think a lot of people don't realize that. You know, I started listening to, to Leak like 10 years ago on YouTube. I saw you 10 years ago. I started listening to you like, you know, mm -hmm. see what oh. I'm saying? But at the time, you know, I was uh, I was a Christian at the time. <laughs> you know, so we used to always go back and forth, you know. <laughs> about oh, religion. wow. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Woo, so that, was, that was 10 <laughs> years ago when I started listening. I believe, was it 10 years ago? Or do I have the numbers off? Uh, I probably, have, probably a little longer. I might have the numbers off. We can say a little, little over ten years a ago. A little over ten years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We can say that. Yeah. That's, that's some great history right there. Wow. Yeah. See, we were just like communicating online at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, we we just started talking to each other last year. Yeah. By phone. Mm. Mm hmm. And but I've been knowing about Talik for a long time. He's been this way since <laughs> I've been knowing him. OK, he has not budged. OK, I have budged since knowing him. I I don't went back and forth since knowing him, you know, between being a Christian and an atheist and then back to a Christian again because I was scared of going to hell. Stuff like that, you know, but, you know, I'm just going to be honest. I left Christianity in 2011 and I went back to Christianity in 2015 because I was scared of going to hell. And that's the real truth. I read a book. You know, <laughs> and it was it was um it scared me. The book scared me. It was called it's called A Land Unknown, Hell's Dominion. So, you know, I don't want y'all to read that book. Please <laughs> do not go get that book and read that book. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I just want to I just want to let y'all know, you know, me and Talik has a longer history than what most people think, you know. <clears throat> and but at the time, you know, I wasn't trying to hear what he had to say, you know, about Christianity. <laughs> 
I, I was I was going to believe Jesus was real no matter what. OK, mm. I was going to believe the Bible is the word of God no matter what. Um, mm. No matter what he said, it did not matter. You know, and even still, he had nothing to do with me walking away from the church in 2011. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even in the picture at the time. Nope. It was, um, you know, I had started listening to other people, you know, and that's what made me start thinking and doing research. But then, like I said, I went back to Christianity out of fear because it is a fear, a fear based consciousness. That's what it is. And right. I just I, I just tell people, you know, fear. Fear will make you do a lot of things. Fear, fear will paralyze a person mentally, mentally and emotionally. Fear by itself, you know. And Christianity, leave it alone, leave it alone, because it's not good for us as a people. It's not good for us. Period. It's not good for nobody. It's not good for nobody. Not just us. Nobody. So that's all I had to add. You know, that's it. I just wanted people to know, you know, he really ain't had nothing to do with me becoming who I am now. Mm -hmm. I just want folks to know that because I think, I think, you know, y'all think that he the one brought me out of church. Mm -hmm. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. That was a decision I had to make on my own. Okay. Again. So that's what I wanted to clarify. That's it. All right. We got brother Gary. He keeps going mm -hmm. in and out. I don't know what to. I sent him a private uh, message. Uh -huh. I told him we, we can't can't hear him. Uh -huh. Okay, well, <clears throat> let's see if we can get him in here sometime before we call it a day. Uh -huh. Want to hear what him and Talib have to talk about? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so we right now we are in a good place. We're in a good place, and really, I'm loving it. Um, had a bunch of haters this year, uh, trying to flag, <laughs> trying to flag my channel down, and uh, it's from the from those pro black type folks. Uh, try to uh, flag my channel down, but they uh, they didn't succeed. In fact, YouTube actually helped us. Uh, when they flag my my videos, YouTube just put them right back up. Mm. So mm. I think that was very disappointing for them. <laughs> and, and and then they even got to the point this year they went to the to the sister because y'all know I'm an In Vogue fan, and when I'm home I have In Vogue in my background. And one of the sisters, Rona Bennett, they went to snitch to her because I had a thumbnail of her. And they actually went to snit, and she came and answered. She came and answered and told me in, a, in sort of like a nasty way, "Hey, that's my thumbnail. How dare you? I'm going to do. I'm going to prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law." I'm like, ooh, lady, is it that serious? <laughs> but people use thumbnails of people all the time. That's not no. ordinary. That doesn't make no sense. I would think. That a, a person on her level, she's supposed to be part of Involve. They travel the world. She has time to trip off somebody using a, a, a thumbnail. Yeah, you can't celebrities that you can't stop people. Do you know how many people on YouTube use celebrity thumbnails? Yeah. Serious? Oh, that's a joke. She yeah. should, she should be happy somebody is using that's promoting them. Are you crazy? Absolutely. Oh, they say, Oh, that's that's wrong oh, that's, that's funny. But she really, she really went off on me like that. I'm like, oh my goodness. That's terrible. But I'm thinking on her level, because right before that happened, they was in China. I'm not in China, but they was overseas doing something. And she got the, she gonna take out her the time out of her schedule. She's overseas to come write about a thumbnail I'm using. You know? Unbelievable. I'm like, I was so disappointed. And the, the Negro almost came out of me. Now I'm not perfect, y'all. Negro can come out. Hey, you can ask Sister Nick. Uh, I'm getting this. Oh, you Sister Negro. <laughs> Sister No. The, the Negro can come out. But I had to stay cool, calm, and collect. And then I had I, I flipped the script. And now the trolls look look stupid. And maybe even that poor sister, she probably sort of feel a little sort of bad too, you know, about that. Because it ain't that serious. Come on, y'all. It's not, it's not that serious. And guess what? 
uh, Tariq Nasheed is having a conference next year in Atlanta, Georgia. Ain't that a wonderful thing? So get y'all $50, $75, your $100 bill. Get them ready, because Tariq Nasheed is coming to Atlanta. I'm giving Tariq Nasheed free promotion. But guess what? You are in a conference right now. It's not costing you a dime. And guess what? What you're going to get in the list of you tonight is going to be better than anything Tariq Nasheed do, and he's, he's going to charge you $100 for it. So if you're not paying nothing for this teleconference, for this video conference, I would hope to get that you do get something out of it, but you shouldn't expect nothing, nothing in return because you don't have to pay for nothing. But now if you pay to ring the sheet a hundred dollars, or if you go to next year, the nation of August Mom will have their savings day and you pay a hundred dollars for a ticket, then I would think and you should demand you need to be getting something out the deal. Right. But they're not gonna never get nothing except more feel good rhetoric. But stay this day been going on for I don't know how long. And Tariq, Tariq Nasheed been doing his thing for how, I don't know how long. And all these other people out here begging for money. I don't know how long they've been out here doing this thing and the people aren't getting anything. So they have the nerve to come here and try to make mockery of me. What you doing? You ain't got nothing. Well, you with the people that's supposed to have something and you, you don't have nothing either. So what's your excuse? Thousands of subscribers, lots of money, lots of big platform, big celebrity. What you got? You don't have no more than what we have right here with my 10 subscribers and my 10 viewers. No more. You should be shaming yourself. The ring the said, I don't care. I'm getting paid. I live in a mansion. <laughs> he don't care. So, I already talked about this. But in order to move forward, one of the things that we have to do, and Sister Peter uh, also commented on this, we already talked about this, it's our diversity. We have, to, we, have to, we have to learn how to tolerate our own diversity because everybody's never, everybody's not going to be the same people. We don't like the same food. We don't like the same music. We don't like the same religion. We don't even like the, the, the same pro blackly black stuff. We are not the same. But we have, we have a lot of things in common. And the number one thing that we have in common is we have a racist beast on our back that you need to get rid of. You got a big racist tick on your back that we need to get rid of. And the only way that's gonna be gonna happen is we have to tolerate these differences like other enemies do. They tolerate their differences, deal with the common enemy, and once they beat the hell out of the common, common enemy, then they come back and have all these debates and. And whatever y'all can do that, me and Sister Noble, we can go out and we're gonna do a I think so. that there's a certain segment of uh the black population that and I'm I'm I was one of those people. It took me a long to realize, mm -hmm. long time to realize. Um, going back to the point that you made, which is an excellent point about learning to tolerate yeah differences within the black community. For a long time, I didn't know it was a difference. I really didn't. <laughs> All of us were the same, and we thought the same. Yeah, the same. I really did. For years, I thought that, and I think that that's a part of the problem. There's a lot of black people out there that was like me. They don't understand that there's differences, and it was rather shocking to me when I realized what I was like. What is going on? Oh, this black person don't think like this. That was <laughs> me to accept. So it's it's taken me a while to to come to the realization, like you said, that there are differences within with within the black community in terms of thought process, and I, and I think um, the enemy got a lot to do with that too because it mm -hmm. painted the picture that we are all the same. Mm -hmm. it's the because I guess because of the well because of the the common oppression that we share as uh, black people um, by Europeans, but like you're saying, there is differences in in, in the black community and we need to become aware of that and then like you said learn to tolerate it so a part of the problem right. there's no there's no awareness of it you got like i said people like me was swearing up and down everybody think every black person thinks the same which is ridiculous <laughs> we're missing out on so much we're missing you know there's if we were more diverse it's brothers and sisters that have their hands 
into into bowls that I can't put my hands in, but they have their hands in, and I need that. Like Sister Rashida, you you need a million dollars to produce your your play. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm running out a million dollar GoFundMe. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> yeah. See? Yeah. So, but if we weren't oh, as possible though, it's if all, we all possible. and messed up the way we are. That million dollars to give you that million dollars to produce that play ain't nothing wrong with that with with, with your play. How does it bring harm to anybody? What? Why would anybody have something against it? I don't see nothing. Why wouldn't they? Want to support the play? Well, I mean, you got when you look back in history, you see people do controversial works that people banned, and uh, you know, and then the person dies, and then it becomes massively popular. This I mean, this all the time. I mean, it don't, I'm just, I don't want you to die like that, sister. But, then get popular, man. I know. <laughs> believe me, I want it. I'm one of them dark skinned people. I want money. I had, I had somebody tell me I was money hungry. I said, "Yep, show lives." And I want money. Why can't I be money? That's, you know, so that's, that's another thing, going back to the diversity. You've raised so many interesting points here. All the stereotypes that we have on each other, etc. It's, it's so many things to dissect there. But yeah, yeah no, no, I mean, I, I want to get my money while I'm alive. I, I, I'm not going to pay. But, um, you know, just looking at history, I'm just making a point. Like Zora Neale Hurston, for example, she's one is celebrating Zora Neale Hurston all over the place, but this they she wasn't celebrated when she was um alive. But um, you know, that's that's how it goes sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we got to get over that hump. If we could get over this hump, uh I don't like you because you comedic or you're a Christian or you're a Muslim, and even you know, you gay and transgender, you intersex, all this other nonsense. We gotta get over that stuff because this is our people, this, this is what we are. That does not mean that you uh, support uh homosexual behavior or uh or, or drug dealing, you dealing the drug. No, we have to deal with our people wherever their mindset is at. And work with our folks there so that we can go forward. Because even a gang member is a is a is a is a is a is a, is a, is a, is a, is a benefit because if it came down to it, our people in the streets, if it came down really like to a real revolution, they out in the streets, they know where things are at, they know how to get things done on the ground. Like if you're talking about guerrilla warfare, yeah, bring your racist ass up into the city. We waiting on you. See, because that's our home. Bring it. So we got to, we have to, hopefully it don't get to a point like that. But if it do, see, people like that is good because they're already on the ground. They know how to deal with the streets. Me, I'm, I'm, I'm too comfortable, Negro. I, I, you know, I'm not like that, you know. And even our homeless brothers and sisters, look, they know how to survive on the street with little or nothing. A lot of knowledge is up there. How do you make it? How do you take care of yourself out there like that? Where is the water at? You know, some of these people know how to go up under the ground, find water sources. Watch their I seen a video where this guy had hot water running water up under the ground somewhere, taking a shower every day. So, you know, we're missing out. In order to deal with this problem, I always tell us it's going to take brains and everybody can contribute to this to solve this problem but we've got to stop ostracizing folks because i don't like your lifestyle i don't look you know you're jamaican you're haitian even all people from the island it don't make no difference we got a common foe here these people know how to all caucasian people aren't the same they know how to come together you your ass mm -hmm. And then after they kick your ass, they go back to fighting among one another. That's what they do. We need to learn how to do that. We need to learn how to be smart. If they use us as a spy or an agent, why can't we get a Caucasian person or a Caucasian man or whoever and use them as a spy? Do you know the reason why you talking to me right now is because there was a white woman that I was cool with when I was locked up. She went into those meetings because I sure couldn't. And she came back and told me, this is what they're planning to do against you. So I was able to counter 
what they was doing. And they, they was, it seems as though this guy's getting some kind of inside information. I was. And they never did suspect him. Never did. So I want to make a few points and we're going to call it a day. We're already out of hour. But I think we're having a pretty good conversation. And so uh, let, uh, if nobody have nothing else to do, we're just going to take it to wherever it's going to go. Brother Gary, I think he got a bad connection. He keeps trying to, he, I, before I could click on, he disappeared again. Okay. You know what? I'd like to say something if you don't mind. I've been listening. Go ahead, Sister Karen. Um, this is Karen. Hey, everybody. Um, listening to that live stream and what you guys were just saying, everybody's separating. Like that troll last night that insisted that Sister Noble was a Jamaican. <laughs> First of all, who gives a shit if she is? <laughs> Your parents were here, and you were born here. You're an American. Mm -hmm. But see, that's the problem. People hope they're worried about reparations. Well, yeah. you can't get none. You ain't, ain't nobody getting no damn reparations. <laughs> ain't nobody getting no reparations. Ain't nobody getting nothing. We can't even agree on nothing. Right. Everybody separated. When you're not one of us, oh, you, oh, you, that, you, this, oh, oh, it's a bunch of mess. Yeah. Distracted by oh you're not this you this religion oh you don't have a religion oh you this color you that you know mm -hmm. it's a bunch of mess it's tiring and it turns people off yeah. it turns people off people want to be like you said they want their knee kiss they want their ass kiss uh, why why should I have to do that I'm tired of making you feel good because you're scary mm -hmm. you can't handle the truth mm -hmm. you can't handle the truth. This world, if this country, everything we're living under is a messed up. Why you want to be distracted by mess in, 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 you know, whether it's whatever the religion is or whatever that thing they're into, because it's, it's a bunch of mess with everybody. It's all confusing. Like, you, I'm like, what? Every time you hear it, it's something new. It's like, okay, well, what, what's your thing? What are you, uh, what are you trying to sell? Somebody always trying to sell you some mess. Yeah. To try to get you on a team. It, it's just a bunch of mess. And it, it, it just pissed me off. I'm like, why is this person coming at you like this? Just like, the, you know, your co-workers. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. You know, that's yeah. upsetting. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. they want to separate you so they can have a reason to put you down. Yeah. Put themselves above you. Well, mm -hmm. you're not what I am. Yeah. You're different from me. Exactly. So I'm going to put you in this box and look yeah. down on you and treat you that. It's just a bunch of mess. See, I'm Everybody was so insecure. I fight back. Though. I fight back. When, they try to treat me, when they try to treat me like crap, I fight back. I don't. I don't lay down. I know that's right. See, you got to. Mm -hmm. You I don't got lay to. But it's just tiring. Mm -hmm. When you said it's exhausting, you ain't lying. An energy vampire ain't no joke. Yeah. Mm. Oh. That they're that they're, they're not no joke. And, no. That, and I just learned about that the past couple of years. These people are evil and they're bullies and they're insecure. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And they're intimidated by us. They can't handle the truth. They know you're smarter than them. Mm. Most people are followers. They're dumb. They take whatever little education yeah. or whatever nepotism they got to get into their job or whatever little position they got to put themselves above you. It's just a bunch of mess. This is why we're losing. This is why we are losing all the time. All we care about is freaking entertainment yeah. and freaking sports. Mm. That's all people, we don't ever want to try to, to, to build our own, just try to, you, you know what I mean? It's always, we got to feel important. What the hell is with that, that you got to feel important? You got to be acknowledged all the time. Yeah. Where, where did this crap come yeah. from? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I just had to vent, but you know what, thank y'all for letting me vent. <laughs> oh, no, no problems, uh, Sister Karen. I like everything you said. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And I think... I'm just so sorry you had to go through that. Look, I've had to yeah. go through the same thing, at, uh, you know, with at jobs. People yeah. thinking I'm this or that. I'm like, what type of mess? Why don't you talk to me? <laughs> and try to get Instead to know of me. assuming what you think I am and put me in a box. Screw you. Exactly. People are crazy. I realize that. Most yeah. people are freaking insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Most people are. <laughs> mm-hmm. They always... There's some agenda or some mess they got. Whatever you, you know, you only gotta let people talk, and they gonna show you how crazy they are. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you who they are. You gotta believe them. Yeah, yeah. And keep your distance when you see they ain't right. Yeah. 
I don't even deal with people like that. I have a very small circle of friends of people that critically think. Yeah. And they're not followers. Like exactly. you said, everybody's looking for a leader. What the hell is wrong with you that you can't lead yourself? Exactly, exactly. How did this mess we deal with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, 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 I'm sorry, but that's it. It's okay. <laughs> no, don't apologize. You're right. right. You're right. I think uh, we finally got Brother Gary. Oh, G Brother Gary's back. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like he's, he's there. I heard, I heard him a little bit. Brother Gary, are you there? Yeah, I'm right here, man. I've been having, man, hey, what's, hey peace and uh, love to everybody, beloved. What's going on, everybody? Yes, sir. Oh, man. I, uh, mm -hmm. I apologize. I not want to have you. I had a lot of things going on. Just I'm sure that each and every one of y'all have a lot of things. But anyways, um, <clears throat> Uh, I don't know what to say there, bro. I mean, um, yeah. oh, I just, I'm sitting back, you know, uh, with my feet, legs kicked up like they broke and what happened sitting there listening. Yeah. You know? Okay, well, you know, Brother Gary, just just come in whenever you feel like it, brother. By all means, brother. I brought by all means. I'm, yes, sir. Because I got a, a, like three three more points or something. You might, I might say something that you want to, you know, add on to it. You, you're welcome. By all means, bro. Yes, sir. So, brother, brother Gary is 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 in the house. We have Sister Rashida, got Sister Karen, got Sister Noble. Brother Talib will be here in, in a little bit, probably. So, I'm feeling good. Uh, got all my people out in in the chat room. Got some Facebook uh people. So, we we doing good. We doing good. And where's that? Where's that uh comment? That I think who's oh brother Chase. Let me put that back up there. Brother Chase, I think it's a Chase. Chase. I don't know whether you male or female. I'm just, I'm just saying, brother, don't worry about getting views on YouTube. Most of them buy subscribers and views pretty much faking it. Right. So I know mine is real. <laughs> I'm cheap to buy <laughs> views anyway. I'm cheap to buy. But uh, let's keep rolling. I want to say as a part of our progress or moving forward, we have to have good leadership. And really, a lot of our best leaders weren't looking to be no leader. They just got sort of pushed out there. Mm -hmm. Dr. King was looking to be a leader. He was a, a preacher's son, but because of his eloquence and speech and his organizing, he was able to organize his organizer. I organizing skill. The people just was drawn to him. You the leader. And Dr. King said, what? He just he, he didn't ask for it. You have people on YouTube and certain folks. Oh, I got some new, some new comments down there. Okay. Okay, okay, Chase. Uh Malcolm X did not ask to be a leader. Malcolm X just liked the teachings of Elijah Muhammad and was just one just just out there wanted to spread the word of Elijah Muhammad teaching. He was not out there looking to be a leader. Most good leaders aren't looking to be leaders. But of course, on social media, because they want the celebrity, they don't want the bullet now. They don't want the bullet. They just want the celebrity. They want the women. They want the money. They want the praise of being Mr. Leader. But they, and they really don't want the responsibility because most of these guys are failures. They're incompetent. They're not producing anything. And then when you get on that case about it, oh, you a hater. You are jealous. What am I jealous of? You have 1,000, 10,000, 40,000, 100,000 subscribers. You can't, and all you guys together can't do a damn thing. You can't accomplish nothing. What is there to be jealous and hateful for? You don't even have a bubble gum machine. You don't have nothing. Like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I'm not being a, a hater. I'm not jealous. 40 years, what you got to show for it, man? He should have projects, apartment buildings, not only for the people that follow him, but for the average brothers and sisters out there and, and knock down some of his high-ass rent mm. so that we can live better out of the 40 years. They're not doing nothing for us. Why are you how are you gonna get angry at me? Because I'm telling you what you can see with your own damn eyes that you you refuse to see, ain't nothing happening. You giving all this money, that's just like going to McDonald's 
and you never get a cheeseburger, but you steady giving McDonald's your money. You wouldn't like that, would you? No, you wouldn't. But you could give Tariq Nasheed and the Black Authority and Sarnetta TV, whoever, Brother Polite, you can give me all these cats, Zaza Ali, whoever, you keep giving them all your money, your time, and you get, what do you get? Maybe a good pamphlet for a meeting you went to. And maybe they might sign it. Some of these suckers are so high and mighty, uh, they gonna, they'll charge you to, to autograph. Mm. They think they so high and mighty over. How can you tolerate this? That's my thing. So we need good leadership. Good leadership. Let me put this on there. Good leadership means you cannot be selfish. Because all your, just like Sister Rasheed was telling me, talking about me, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not bragging about myself or whatever. But everything about me is about this struggle. It's not about making no damn money. If I can't live in a million dollar house, if I can't, if my people can't live in a million dollar house, I'm not going to live in one. You have these people supposed to be part of a revolution, liberating the people, fighting for you, and they're living like they superstar Michael Jackson or somebody in Beverly Hills. So they have all these resources, millions of dollars that you can open a business with, that you could easily give a million dollars to the Rashida, because that ain't nothing in the in the grand scheme of things. A million dollars ain't nothing. But no, you rather sit home with your swimming pool and your big doors and gold ceilings and all this other nonsense, and you are a liberator. Fidel Castro, prior to him getting into power, I guarantee you he did not live in no house with no chandeliers and and, and, and beauty, beauty, is, you know, that Nat Turner didn't live that way. Malcolm X only had a hundred dollars when he was assassinated. Dr. King didn't have nothing. All those who were really fighting for us was broke. Not because they could not because they couldn't be rich, because they was in a position to, to get rich. Because all their resources was going toward the struggle, toward the fight. That's why they was broke. And they want you to think. The other way around. Once you get your liberation, once you get free, yeah, now you deserve a big house and chill out. Because you earned it for real. You done dodged some bullets. Yeah, now you deserve a little bit, you know, whatever. But still at the same time, if the people can't have a million dollar house, why the hell are you going to have one? We don't want to live like that no more. We don't want to be that way. Your whole mindset of looking at life has to be different. You know, a lot of us are materialistic. We're thinking about money, 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 money. It's not about money because as a people, we have money as a people. Now, as Sister Noble and myself, as individuals, we don't have no money. But as a people, we do. And you hear it every holiday season, the billions of dollars that black folks are going to spend on Christmas. Mm. So we ain't broke as a people. The only thing, but see, again, we're not together. Our diversity, our diversity keeps us apart. So we can't take that money and pool it and put it into some real business. And that real business should be the Mississippi campaign. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Now, look. A leader has to have, have to be creative. You have to have imagination. And you have to have a vision for a future that you're not even going to be part of. You're going to be long dead and gone. That's, that's your leadership. Do you see this, all this money that y'all giving to these people and these large platforms? Do you see this? And this is who you follow. No, you don't see it. Why are you going to get angry at me? Because they're not producing. They're not producing. That's not my fault. The only thing I'm doing is saying, y'all giving all your money. That's because you feel stupid. But you feel good about it, though. But you feel good about it. And that's all they're going to give you is feeling good. They're not producing nothing for you at all. In order, here we are in a, a situation. We don't have an army. We don't have bombs. 
We don't have grenades and all that kind of good stuff. So you're dealing with an enemy that got all that stuff. You got an enemy that control the media and all a lot of. So that means you got to play smart with this guy. Like in martial arts, how many of you are in martial arts? In martial arts, you can be a very tiny little guy. But in martial arts, they teach you. You can only you probably weigh 90, 100 pounds. But in martial arts, they teach you how to throw somebody 300 some pounds or whatever. How is that possible? See, that's the thing about it. We are living with somebody that's 300 pounds. An enemy that's 300 pounds. You have to understand how to learn how to fight somebody that's quadruple your size. You don't know how, to, but that's where you have to have to learn how to be creative, have to have some imagination. And once you beat this bastard, what you gonna do once you get free? See, that's another question. Okay, you want your liberation, you want to get free. To do what? To continue to be the Negro that we are right now? We smokers. Going to the strip club, beating up the sisters, whole hopping, all this nonsense that we don't do do day in and day out. If you're gonna keep the same mentality, the same mindset that we have, we might as well just stay and keep doing what we're doing to the day we die. Might as well. Might as well just keep doing what we're doing. And most of them are like that. That's why they're not gonna come here. Because see, in order to change, we have you have if you want to change, that means you have to change. You cannot remain the way that we are right. You have to change with the change. And you don't take this situation serious either. Dr. King said, and I'm not quoting, paraphrasing, but he was talking about, and he felt bad. He said, I fear that I'm leading or I have led my people into a burning house. This is what Dr. King said. So, you would agree, most of you, especially if you black and black, black, you would agree that we are in a burning house. So, if you are in a burning house, if myself and Sister Noah, we are in a burning house, are you going to really trip on the person that coming in to save your life? So, we in the burning house. And the white man come. Are you going to say, oh, no, Mr. White Man, you the devil. Uh, I can't go with you. Uh, is that what you're going to do? Or a Chinese fireman come. Uh, th those Asians don't treat the Africans right. I'm not going to. No, you try, You need to save your life. You are going to follow. You're going to go follow the lead of the person who can get you the hell out the damn fire because you are in a burning house. So, so many, most of you really don't really believe that you are in a burning house so you can be picky about who you want to be the leader, who you want to follow, who you want to listen to, because you really don't believe you are in a burning house. But if you are in a real burning house, believe nobody don't give a damn if you're homosexual, you're gay, lesbian, transgender, if you're black or white. When you're in a burning house, only you know I got to get the hell out of here. And that's the attitude that you have to have in order to get out of this situation. I just got to have, I got to get the hell out of here. If Sister Rashida got on her fireman's helmet and on a ladder and I'm in a burning house, I'm gone. I don't care nothing about nothing else. There's no questions asked. You can't pick and choose when you're trying to save your life. Who's saving your life? Who's going to come for you? You can't do that. Because a life and death situation. Either I'm going to go with the sister when she, well, women shouldn't be fire people. Well, sit your ass up in that burning. then. I'm going with her. I'm gone. That's the type of attitude that we have to have in order to get out of the situation. You can't trip on who's pretty. Are you a Jamaican? Are you Haitian? Uh, uh, are you a biracial? And all? You have to trip on, I need to get out of this house. Now, once you get out of the fire, it's a whole different ball game, ain't it? It's a whole different ball game. Now you can make certain choices. Now I ain't gonna do that. Now I don't. Now you can do it because you saved your life. But you can't trip on that when you are in a burning house, when you're in a life and death situation, when you're in the middle of the ocean drowning. You can't trip on who's gonna come. 
if you want to save your life. There's no picking choose about who's going to leave. So because you really don't like what I say, but if you really listen to what I say about the Mississippi campaign, deep down in your soul, you say, that makes sense. But you don't like me. Then you got the nerve to talk about the ancestors. The ancestors was doing that. If it was not for racism, if it was not for terrorism, if it was not those obstructions in the South, our people was doing that anyway. So if you make, make mockery of Angel Snuff number seven, the ancestors that you claim that you love, they might be them. Because that's what they was doing. That's their progress. That's, they, that's how they was moving. They was making those kind of moves straight out of slavery. They started creating their own cities and, and town. They was doing that kind of stuff already. Had nothing to do with religion or spirituality. They were just trying to survive. And they, they was ostracized from the rest of society, so they had no choice but to work with their own, do their own thing, and use their brain to solve their problem. So, I want to say this, and we're gonna we're gonna bring this to conclusion. Say this here about the Mississippi campaign. When we come into this world. We develop, and the vital organ that we have is, of course, your brain. Your brain is a vital organ. Your heart is a vital organ. These different things is vital organs. Should you lose them, chances are you're going to die. It's guaranteed because they are vital. Vital organ, that means vital for your life. If you lose them, you're dead. It's over. You're through it. So I want to talk about the heart. The heart is a vital organ. And the purpose of the, heart, of the heart is to take the nutrients and the minerals, your, your life, and because the blood is the life of the body, and it takes that and it pumps that all through your body. If that heart stops pumping, dead man, you're a dead one, right? So you take this analogy and apply it to a people. Right now, we're just an embryo. We have not developed into anything. We and one of the vital organs to begin to form is a heart. And I say that heart is the Mississippi campaign. It could be any state. And see, that's another thing. Why, why Mississippi? See, we're so selfish. Why Mississippi? How come it can't be New York? How come it can't be Alabama, Georgia? I'm saying Mississippi because it's a state where nobody don't give a damn about. It's poverty stricken. Nobody cares about it. It has a large soul brother and sister population. It can get the job done where we want it to be done. Now, once, see, look, once you begin to draw attention to it, Watch how important it is. Just the fact that you even tried the Mississippi campaign idea. Watch TV every day. What is them niggas doing? All over the world, what are they doing? Never been done before. What are they trying to do? This is your heart. Mississippi is going to be your heart. You got to stop tripping off. Because, see, you're thinking about your own benefit. This is going to be our benefit. We got to help this one geographical location and turn it our heart. Turn it so that it can be that which can pump blood. Because once you start, your, your arms start coming out and your legs, it can start pumping the blood to the other places where you go, your body as you grow. You need to develop this, this geographical spot I don't care what they do in the rest of America. When you come here to Mississippi, you can feel safe. You don't have to worry about no cop pulling up behind you, giving you know these silly tickets and all these other nonsense that when you come to Mississippi, you can get rid of all the laws that was against you and throw them away. You control the National Guard. You control the public educational system. You control the budget of a state. 
Now, you are gay hour. You growing your own food the way you think that it needs to be done. Organic, organic meat, organic vegetables on the real. And you become the largest producer of organic produce and meat. That'll be a beautiful place for you to go to and get your food from being a vegetarian, Sister Rashida. Because then you, because you'll know what the deal is. Pure organic. Right. You buy the apple, a worm might be in it. Pure organic. And you feeding the people clean, healthy food, your, your people. Plus, it creates jobs and all that. Mississippi is already an agricultural state. But it won't work. It won't work unless the people have the correct mindset. Because it's not about let's get rich and beautiful houses and swimming pools and, and all this kind of good stuff. It ain't about that. You have a whole brand new way of life. Everybody basically live the same. You got a red house. I got a yellow house, but they look the same. So what? Who gives a care? You don't have to. You start a system where you don't have to get up and go to work every damn day. You can work three or four days out of the week. Give it to somebody else. But everybody, you got, you have electricity, you got gas, you got all these different things. Spend more time with your family. Spend time with your life. A whole brand new way of life living right here in America. You say that you're smart. Bring your technology, all your talents, put it in this one space. You're a business person. This state can give you a low law. And create laws to make you, when you bring your business into this geographical area, so you don't have all these obstacles. And you have a ready-made audience, ready-made customers already for your business. Because we buy and support ourselves first. It's your heart. And once you get that heart strong, now you can branch out. And from that heart, if we decide to concentrate on Alabama or Georgia or something like that, then it can pump the blood. That Mississippi can support the activity of Alabama or Georgia so it begins to get strong. You're not going to get anything messing with the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or none of the other stuff. We have to be smart enough to go in here, pull our resources, and take it. What can they do? And you are voting. Because we're going to go into Mississippi, you're going to go into Mississippi and use your voting power to vote all the bums that's not going to be on board with what you want out and bring your people in. And if we don't have enough population, pool our resources and bring our homeless people from all over the country, get them a home, make them somebody, make them residents of Mississippi so they can vote and vote all them bastards out. Take over this damn state. And you will gain power. For the first time, you never had. Mississippi speak. Whoever the president is, I don't give a damn who they are. They're going to listen because you're a state. You got the power of a state behind you. See what I'm saying to you? A state can also engage in international trade. You can trade with China on your own as a, or any place in Africa. Y'all keep talking about what they do in Africa. Now you're a state. Now you got power. Now you got some real money. Now you got some influence. The Africans will talk to you now. They're not going to talk to you right now because you don't have nothing. You don't have nothing at all. What you going to do? You tell them, talk about the Africans should do this and the Africans should do that. Why should they listen to you? You don't have nothing. You're a bum on the street begging this cracker for, for whatever you got. But as a state, now you can talk. They'll listen to you now. Well, you know, the Mississippi come here, the ambassadors from Mississippi come here to Ghana and they say they want to do this and they want to do that. Now they'll talk to you. But right now, they ain't going to talk to you because you're a bunch of bum. You don't have no power. You don't have no influence. You don't have nothing. If you mess around and get caught up in some racist garbage in another state, run to Mississippi. You can be protected. Say, whoa. We need to need we need to know more about this crime before we get this man up. Now you are under the jurisdiction of Mississippi. 
And the federal government and the other state are going to have a problem dealing because you have something called states' rights. You can't just come and just grab somebody. No, because the state of Mississippi said, no, you can't have them. You got to go through some procedure. Let's investigate this. Now you see you got a, a safe haven. You got something that can help you, benefit you. Now you tell me, as you listen to me, the person, what other idea, what, else, what do these other people got to offer that's going to give you this? It's not. Think about Eidos, and you begging this man. He's not going to give you anything. But Mississippi campaign, you taking it because you are actually controlling the, the budget of a state. And it has nothing to do with uh, race because whatever you do in this state is going to benefit everybody, the white folks, the Chinese, whoever else is in the state. And if you're doing it right, they're going to support you too. They're going to say, because they, they're going to say, this is looking good. We ain't never lived with this before. They should have done this a long time ago because we're not, we're not trying to make no money. We're not trying to be rich. We want to try to improve the quality of life of the people and make things better for us. So I'm not trying to live in no mansion. I'm not trying to do nothing better for myself. You're trying to put our people and the people in a different position. And in fact, if you do it right, don't you know that you'll be an example of how life should be made all over the world? Because it's too much resources for everybody to be impoverished and exploited and the stuff that we go through day in and day out. You are putting yourself in a position to change the world, not only of your own life, but the whole world of humanity. Because even your Bible said, the kingdom of heaven is in you. And how are you going to get it? By using your old noggin. But you can't use your noggin. These people have you in these boxes, down in these beliefs and this spiritual stuff. It's not taking you nowhere. Reading codes. They don't get you nowhere. My ancestors, ancestors show me what we need to do. Because it could have been done a long time ago. So, the Mississippi campaign is about giving you power that you never had before. I'm not talking about no civil rights. Mm. Shout out to all those who was part of that movement and anybody that did anything to help us. But you see, but it's not enough. And we live in 2019. In order to get in, back into this game, you got to do something that is big. An African school is not going to solve our problem. Selling bean pies on the street ain't going to solve your problem. Putting on these Fancy caps, Morris caps, or whatever that y'all like to wear, whatever, that's not going to solve your problem. You need something that can gain you respect and power. So when they talk to you, it's they can't talk to the Negro any no more because that big chunk of land called Mississippi, that backs you up. Right now you talk, right now you talk, nothing backs you up. You say God do, but... <laughs> You say God do. You have no backup at all. Nobody's on your side. Either you make it for yourself or it's not going to get done. These people don't care about you like that. All your leadership, they have no imagination. They're not creative. They have no vision for the future. I'm looking at a future that I'm going to head and gone. Never see. But I have an idea of what it needs to look like. And you can blow my brains out. But when I share the vision with you, whether I'm here or I'm gone, you can keep going. And get the job done whether I'm dead or alive. And you teach every baby, this is how we need to do. Stay on this road. And you'll get there on earth. The heaven that you talk about in the sky or wherever the hell it's supposed to be is right here in your brain and it's right here on earth. Life is what you make it. If I'm going say that heaven and hell is just a condition of life, we already know what hell is about. 
So let's get the hell out of our brains, out of our mind, the way so heaven can come forth. I don't care who the president is. I don't care Republican, Democrat, whoever. Politics is not going to do it for you. Not in that manner. The only thing you're going to do is keep getting this chump change and some more feel-good rhetoric. If you really want some power, you vote. Concentrate on this one particular spot. Make it strong where it benefits you. And it'll give you power. You'll be like, oh my goodness. Why haven't we done this a long time ago? The reason why we ain't done it a long time ago, because your leadership keeps you in these boxes, keeps you in fairy tale land, keeps you outside of reality so that you cannot see. So that you can't see and be have an imagination, so that you can't be creative. Y'all keep doing the same thing. Protest somebody on Facebook yet uh, talking about some new march they're gonna do. So what march to do? What is it gonna do for you? Nothing. Be a soldier. Sacrifice. Take our dollars and our dollars our talents and our influence, concentrate on this one area and make it for you. And once it gets strong, you can move there, but you don't have to move there because we're gonna, you're gonna branch out to more than just that because that's not gonna be enough. You're talking about 40 plus soul brothers and sisters in this country. When they see that you're doing well, everybody gonna wanna get on board. Right now, see, and that's another thing. All right, Sister Rashida. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. See, there's another thing about the Mississippi campaign. How are it's not fair that you make mockery of something you ain't never tried it? How do you know it's not going to work? You never even tried it. I remember that was a, a Jamaican sister that I knew. And at the time, I did not like potatoes. I did not like beets. Mm. I did not like them. I don't like it. Don't tell me. I don't want to hear about the potatoes. I don't want to hear about the beets. Mm. I, I don't like it. And she told me, I can make you like these beets. Mm. I can make you like the potato. I can make you. I can make you. Because the way I'm going to cook this, I'm going to make you. You're going to like oh. these. I'm going to make you. I said, I doubt it. Because I don't like green eggs and ham. <laughs> Sam, I am. Because I don't like that. Mm. She said, give it a try. Mm. Try it. And so she did it. I looked at it. I'm like, eh. Woo! I like potatoes to this day. Oh, my goodness. And Sister Noble would tell you, I go, I got to have my mashed potato. I got to have some kind of potato. Oh my God. Even to this day, I got to have a potato. Fried potato, mad potato, 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 potato. I got to have a potato because of her. And beets. I can eat beets straight out the can. Ooh. I can just open a can of beets and eat the beets straight out the can because of her. Now, it don't taste, of course, it don't taste like what she does. She made me like beets. She made me like things I thought. So, see, why don't you try it? You're already done wasting your money on all these other ideas. Why don't you try? You're already wasting your time on all these other ideas and concepts. Why don't you try it? Give it a, or is it too big for you? Mm. Is it too big for you? You can't comprehend. Mm. It's too big for you. Y'all gods and goddesses and warriors and kings and queens. Well, if you can, well, take over a state then. And become your own king in that state. Right. See? See? Become your own king or, in, queen. or queen in your state. Because technically, really, you could call it your, your nation. Well, I say that there's, there's no homosexuals in my nation. Well, keep living with the white folks. Then. Don't come stay with them, okay? All that nonsense. Because this has nothing to do with your morality. This is about what is in the best interest of a people. And you are a liar when you talk about you care about a people. Because that's who we are, whether you like it or not. Caught up in their religion. See, caught up in religion and all this other 
black conscious scholarship stuff, whatever the hell it is. And then, you know, there, there was no such place as so-called Sodom and Gomorrah in the Bible anyway, mm -hmm. you know, by the way. Okay. There was no, mm -hmm. no such place as that mm -hmm. in the Bible. You know, they, they, they talk about how these gay men, you know, that's raped the two angels in the book of Genesis, you know, in the town of Sodom. And, you know, there, there's no such place as Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. It never even existed. Mm -hmm. The story is not true, in other words. I'm trying to tell you. It's a mythical story. I mean, you can believe you want it's to. A it's a mythical story. Not, yeah. it's, not. It's, it's not true. No. It's a mythical story, okay? But that being said, keep on going. You want freedom, right? You claim that's what you want, but you ain't never had it. We've never been in a position where we became independent from these Caucasian people. Never. Show me a time. Well, you don't you talk about Egypt. I ain't talking, I'm talking you, Negro. Sci the scientific term is homo Negro. You, Negro, African American. When was that time when you was independent living with these races? You never. So that means you really never been free because a free person provides their own food, clothing, and shelter. And even though our people came out of slavery, they still were with the Peckerwood, and all their resources, they still had to go to the Peckerwood to still get things done. They, was, they weren't able to produce their own. And they still under the domination, under the, law, the laws and the policy of their oppressor. But had they continued and took now they are in a position they can change some of that. You're still under the jurisdiction of the federal government. Also, once you show yourself that you can take control of a state, now you can actually say, I can build a nation. How the hell are you going to build a nation and you can't even control a state that's already functioning? Water systems are already in place, electrical systems, gas systems. Uh, other infrastructure. It's already in place. You can't control that. How the hell are you going to build a nation? How? 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 But you can take control of this. Now you get experience in what a nation, how to run a nation. Because you don't have no experience running a nation at all. The only thing you, we know how to do is run for Congress, whatever, and become a, 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 a manager in the white man's stove. Mm -hmm. That's all you know how to do. But you don't know nothing about creating the running of that story. Mm -hmm. But when you take control of the state, yeah. But when you take control of the state, now you're getting the experience of really what it is to run a country. Because really, technically, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, New York, you do understand that they really they really are small countries, really. They are technically countries because each of these each of these states actually can survive on their own. They're supposed to be set up where they are independent on their own. So really, that's really you take and really you take control of Mississippi. Really, you earn it. You should. Really, we deserve having Mississippi and some other stuff. Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee. We earn it anyway. It should be ours anyway. But Sister Peckerwood, you know they're not going to give you nothing. Then let's take it. And there's nothing they can do about it. There's nothing they can do about it. You did. You smart to use your own brain. Now, the sad thing about it is I wish I could take them by surprise. We shouldn't have to go on the internet and tell your business like that. When they open up their eyes, we almost, the state is almost taking taking control of us. But unfortunately, you know, we have to come out on the internet and, and get out of business. But you know something? I'm so confident, I don't give a damn. I don't even give a damn. I'm so confident. Like, when I was locked up, I was so confident in what I was doing. I told them what I was doing. I don't give a, you can't stop me. I'm confident in what I'm doing. So I don't care whether they know or they don't know. Use your CIA, use your FBI, whatever, whatever you want to use. You ain't gonna stop a damn thing here. It's only it ain't nobody breaking no laws, nobody doing nothing like that. You can't get us caught up in nothing. 
It's a whole new ball again. Get some heart and let's make a heart for the people so that you can get some power for a change. And then the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit, y'all. You are the example of humanity. You do this, don't you know how you, you, we will impress the world. They're like, how the hell? Some people that were slaves, look what they doing, look what they accomplishing. But it's always been in us. We are allowing these other things to hinder our thinking process and stop us because it's limited in what it can do. So on that note, I'm really done. If you would like to know more about the Mississippi campaign, subscribe to Operation Exodus Mississippi. And I'll go more into detail. And perhaps we will have a, a question and answer video just for that. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get Brother Talib back on here. Hey, Brother Talib. Yeah. Let me get you back on here real quick. See if I can mer right. merge in. Who is this phone? It's got a, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I was just finishing up my, my lecture, Brother Talib. If you want to, I don't know if you was able to hear anything, but if you want to say, say a few words before we close this out. Uh, I would like to. I would just like to say that uh, just keep your eyes on the prize and uh, with this Mississippi campaign, this can be possible if we are as a uh, dark skinned descendants of slaves born in America to just uh, you know, push our petty differences to the side and unite for once and for all and, and forget all this other crap that's going on outside of what concerns us as a in this country, and let's do something for once and for all for ourselves and for our future generations. Because uh, if we don't, we are certain to become an exterminated people. And um, in fact, like I've said myself, you know what I'm saying, personally and directly, that uh, the better off being exterminated if we do not see our way up out this hell. I mean, what's the use of even being here? I mean, you know, I mm -hmm. mean, there have been other groups of people around the world throughout human history that have been exterminated, and we won't be the first, nor will we be the last, more than likely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to really take this into serious consideration if we really want to be free. We're not free. Our ancestors knew they weren't free. And that's the difference. They knew they were not free, but we still don't realize that we are not free. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because of these, uh, you know, little uh, tiddly bit uh, trinkets we got going for ourselves. Whether it's a home, a house, a big fat bank account or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I've said before in my own videos on my channel. That, that could easily be taken away at any right given time or opportunity in this country. Mm -hmm. You know? And, 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 and it happened during the 1930s depression, okay? So, I mean, let's not get this situation twisted. You know, we have a bad situation as a people. You know, and it's not getting any better. Trust me, it ain't getting any better. It's gotten even worse since the civil rights movement, since around the time I was born over 50 years ago, okay? It has gotten a lot worse, you know, and it's not going to get any better until we take our destiny into our own hand, like uh, someone named Marcus Garvey said almost 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. We have to take our own fate and destiny. No one else is going to do it for us, okay? We ain't no gods, especially the gods we believe in going to come and do it for us. That's already been proven over throughout time and time again, okay? And, 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 and I know I don't really 
know how to stop stressing that, but that's just a fact. You know, point blank. And, 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 and I mean, it's like uh, we need to really understand, too, that everybody that look like us is not our brother and sister. So we have to stay conscious of that. As we, once we choose to decide that we really want to fight and take our liberation, for once and for all, we got to understand that everyone that look like us is not our brother and sister. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to be conscious of that all the way through. You know, and that, and by us being conscious and guarding against that fact, and knowing that fact will lead us, will help lead us to our liberation. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't let nothing, including those who look like us, who's trying to just be in the way of our liberation and, and, and not be a, a solution, but be in the hindrance to our liberation. We need to remove them out the way. Like any other group of people who uh, remove a Benedict Arnold out their way. You see what I'm saying? We the only people in the world that act like we ain't got that ability, but we do, once we have that unity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like I said before, um, we need to really understand this. You know, we are uh, we are in a tight war, not only against with the races, but against our own kind, because a lot of our own kind don't want to see us get to the promised land. True that. You know, so... I mean, we got to understand this. Even if we look at the fact that when it comes to this little tilly bit stuff, we have our own kind. Mm -hmm. Who don't want to see the next fellow uh, soul man or soul woman get nowhere? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to us as a group of people in general, that's definitely a fact that even more so we got our own kind in some cases who don't want to see us get nowhere when it comes to true liberation. Mm -hmm. So we got to recognize that, you know, we got to really be conscious of that. And we got to definitely take it serious. And for those of you, like the brothers or, or sisters, whoever it was that call themselves addressing uh, uh, Brother Talik and sister, sister Noble Levine about being negative, let me tell you something. I'm on 18, and yes, I'm negative. Okay, <laughs> because if things get better, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could go, you could go on my own channel, which is called Eric Bell, and I'm gonna be negative on that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, take it like you want to. It don't really matter to me, right? You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I, I like they said they gonna try to keep it more civil today because mm -hmm. there's some other things I could say that. I'm pretty sure Talik and, and, and Nobelin, Noble, Noble, Noble uh, Levine wouldn't say. You know what I'm saying? There's some things that I would really say, you know, that, that'll make you mad, but I don't give a damn about that either. Because that's how much of a turmoil you of, of, in the serious condition our people are in. Mm -hmm. We're still in slavery, literally. If you look at the 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution, it still supports the fact that slavery never ended in the United States. We're still in the slave society. Wake up. Paul is in that amendment that proves that we are still in slavery. Okay? We are still slaves. And I'm talking about us as black people, African American, or whatever you want to call yourself. We as soul people, or people of soul, are still in slavery. The only thing is, is that they ain't got us on the cotton plantation and the sugar plantations. But they got us all, uh, you know, warehouses and these jails and prison and ju juvenile detention centers all throughout the country, which is uh, racking up to more than two some million people. That's still slavery, brother. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's getting in the population with that situation is increasing every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm in a place here in Nebraska where it's majority of Caucasians, but every time I look up, I'm looking at the mug shots on the internet on the local internet site here 
they got more black people whose mug shots is posted mm. than, than, than Caucasian uh, uh, people's mug shots, okay? Mm-hmm. Go to South Dakota, which is a state right north of here, over across the border line. I mean, across the state line. You got Native American Indians there, but you also got 1% black people there. And guess what? They put, they, uh, the black people there that ain't number 1% in that state is helping to you know, overpopulate that uh, prison system up there, mm. along with the Native Americans, okay? And we know South and North Dakota ain't nothing but a cracker uh, state. <laughs> it's ain't nothing but cracker states. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Without no doubt. It was a time, it, it was a time when it was hell just for black people to drive through South and North Dakota. It was, you know, but now it's, it's the population grew, like I said, the one some percent. And you got more of them locked up than there, then you got the Caucasian population up there locked up in that state. You see what I'm saying? So, so like I said before, this is no joke. No matter what we had in the country, even if it ain't that many of us, they will find a way to make sure that it's more of us locked up than them if they can. Trust me. It's no, it's no friendly parts of this country called the United States. Nowhere in these 50 states in the Union do anyone care for us, okay? That's how bad of a situation we are in, definitely. And we need to take that seriously. You know, this is not no game. Our, our children are dying every day in these streets at the hands of racists and at the hands of each other. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 a, and a lot of our older adults is too. You see what I'm saying? Over mm-hmm. nothing most of the time anyway. So we need to, we need to wake up and take this thing seriously for what it is and stop playing these, uh, you know, cat and mouse games with each other. Mm-hmm. No one likes us. No one respects us. Not even the immigrants. Let me repeat that again. Not even the immigrants, okay? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, we need to really wake up. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, 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 you know, we got a whole lot against us. We got more against us than our ancestors during the civil rights movement mm-hmm. and going against them. You know, do I need to repeat that again? I mean, you know, so like I said before, this situation is very serious that we are uh, in as so-called black people in America, more than what we think. Mm-hmm. Those, 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 those uh, tiddly bit uh, things I just mentioned, jobs, cars, homes, or mm-hmm. uh, bank accounts or whatever, like I said, that easy could be taken at the right given time of right. opportunity. Mm-hmm. Right. Just because we got a few, a couple of black billionaires, a few black millionaires in this country ain't stopping us from getting our heads blow off by no damn races. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or by, or even by each other. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so, you know, like I said, uh, I mean, we, we need to we need to really wake up and, 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 and understand and take this thing seriously. It is serious. This ain't no time to feel good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we can start doing that once we close our eyes for the last time, okay? Mm. That's how this situation stands. And I mean that. That's how this situation stands. We can start worrying about feeling good after we close our eyes for the last time. After we take our last breath in our body. Because while we still breathing, (laughs) it's nothing but hell on earth. Mm -hmm. Like a rap group from the 90s, my people would say. Mm -hmm. It's straight up hell on earth for us. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I said before, uh, we need to wake up and understand and realize that. You know, all you all you brothers out there in the, on the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> fighting, you know what I'm saying, against each other over wearing different colors and stuff. You better understand and realize what you got going on to get you out there. How the Mexicans is helping the racists neutralize our population in California. Oh, yeah. As far as uh, black people is concerned out there. 
Mm-hmm. And the same thing with Chicago is going to start happening. Mexicans going to eventually start pushing up into Chicago. Mm-hmm. Running more of y'all up out of there like they did in California. Then Detroit. Mm-hmm. Then even Atlanta. Then New Orleans. Then where you going to go? They going to then hit Alabama. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Maybe even Mississippi. You see? Then what you going to do? Mm-hmm. Louisiana. Uh, Ohio. <laughs> you, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I mean, I mean, they, 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 the, the, the Mexicans, uh, uh, mafias, and them, uh, other Latino gangs from Latin America spread throughout this country, mm-hmm. and that's a fact. Mm-hmm. And 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 them, and them Caucasians is allowing them to do that for no reason. They don't give a damn about them getting in this country illegally. Huh. That ain't mm-hmm. nothing but a smoke screen. You gotta wake up. They've been doing that. Mm-hmm. Even before Trump got in, even before Obama got in, they been doing that. That's why they was able to populate California like they was, especially in Southern California and start running Negroes up out of there. But, uh, that's why uh, Compton ain't uh, over black populated like it once was. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because of that situation. You know, so I mean, like I said before, I, I mean, you know, why y'all killing each other over wearing your hat turned the other way, the wrong way, wearing different clothes and colors and killing each other over all this crazy stuff or drugs or whatever the case is. You know, y'all got to wake up. It's a bigger picture when it comes to the enemy outside of us. It's a bigger picture outside of us when it comes to external forces. That's trying to uh, totally destroy us as a people. And like I said, this Caucasian racist ain't doing it by itself. We got these immigrants over here helping them. You know, so you better wake up. You know? So you better wake up. Like I said, we we we, we're better off exterminated as people, and it's just that simple. Mm. With that said, brother Taleb. That uh, said, I'm gonna rest my mic and let this brother Tali <laughs> carry us all the way out. <laughs> and for those of you that was already on the old live thing, I'm sorry I missed you. I had to do something. But uh, I'm, I'm sorry I missed y'all. And, and I will watch the rest of the video to see what was going on through, through the video. Yes, sir. And I and I and I and I appreciate you letting me on this live thing out. And I will be returning next year for our next so uh, liberation day. And uh, I'll turn and yield the mic over to you, brother Talik. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, before we close out, uh, brother Gary, you still out there? If you want to say something, brother. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate it. Hey, hey, a good, good word, man. Um, with your verbal and what have you, stuff, brother Talib and what have you, stuff, as well as you, there, brother Talik. Thank you. And um, and the sister dark skin activism and uh, anybody that's out there too that uh, came to participate. I. I it's an honor that I came out here. I mean, of course, you're going to do. I didn't even know. As much as I've been knowing you for a minute and what have you and stuff, I didn't even know nothing about this whole liberation thing. Uh-huh. The next time that I do, that gives me ample time to, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, participate and um, give my little uh, verbal and what have you and stuff uh, to the, the fourth yes, sir. soul liberation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I appreciate that. Uh, let me say this. Despite everything that we're saying, whether it's the white man or the pale, the pink man or society or this or what, the word liberation couldn't help it. Just the same way we utilize the word state, where it could be synonymous in some ways, if we, you know, uh, to a country. You know, it's all about the state of mind. The thing that I feel of liberation is that I realize everything that I've, my, to, for where I came through, for me to arrive where I'm at now. Uh, and I appreciate the things that I've been through and my failures and my, uh, uh, how can I say it? But to get what I'm saying and what have you stuff, the liberation that I always look at is not the liberation that we, I've, I always emphasize is the inf- the, the liberation of oneself. Mm-hmm. The people, I've, I, 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 you know, I'm a big proponent of this. I'm a big emphasis of people of the individual, the person, because when people look out in a tent, I've, I, you know me with sociology and psychology of slave mortality and 
master mortality. It is the individual. Uh, it's the individual that one has to liberate. When I teach my daughters, when my I, I said this in one of your things, my daughter, I asked me that question about hell. I respect what she does. I always teach my children to develop their own individuality. I do influence them, but I influence them to give them guidance because I might know my children as they go older, regardless of how much I implement and entrench and embed a lot of my principles and what have you, they have the possibility possibility to go astray. But when my daughters ask me about, I, they're Christians and I respect that. But when they ask me about hell, my biggest thing is about in the, the individual. It is you. You are the jihad. You are the jihad of the struggle of good and bad or, uh, with yourself. And um, black people, their problem is, is that they, the, it's just like when you look at the Republicans. It's the inner group and out group, A group, B group. When I study the sociological, when I study on the, um, the mosaic of uh, politics, I'm just using the Republicans because liberals do it too. But in particular, it's, it's exemplified by looking at the Republican Party is that they always when they feel like their culture is threatened, particular white folks, they have to find fault. They feel like our culture that we feel like we've been doing this and sustaining and maintaining historically through what's facilitated, oriented to our, um, our um, whatever. We feel like our culture is being diminished. We're under threat. Rather than looking at themselves, they want to blame the Hispanics. We're paranoid. We have an anxiety towards the blacks. So it's a, I see the same parallel that I see amongst black folks. Hmm. You know that. You know, uh, and we want to blame, blame, and then we have to join all these groups, uh, these organizations to find. The, you know, because of our insecurities, our fragile mind, our historical emotional distress. That's why you see us in all these groups rather than looking and retreating and looking back with inside ourselves and saying that we are the monsters. We are the people, despite the fact that we are um, inadvertently have been given a, a bad hand. Uh, it is, I'm trying to keep it short because you got to go. I'm a strong believer of of of, of uh, looking at ourselves. Look at the state, the government, political. It's uh, it is it is us. It's within looking at that person in that mirror. You know, saying uh, <clears throat> it's the person that's within inside of ourselves and what have you stuff. Because we're gonna live in this world, and this world's been spinning for 4.5 billion years, and our society's over 10,000. Well, we want to say that's. Um, civilization has been around since Mesopotamia and ancient um, Egypt and what have you and stuff. And we've been battling each other, the, the, the masters against the slaves, the slaves against the masters, um, the, the, uh, and what have you. But that's, that's my thing. The liberation is the liberation of looking with inside ourselves and break the shackles of the illusions that we put on each other and the excuses and the redundancy and the repulsiveness of finding blame and the blame is actually the person that's when they wake up in the morning and they look that person in the mirror or it's not just the mirror that is um um that we see in the bathroom it's that inner that inner mi mirror and that's that mirror of looking at oneself and having the courage and to admit it is not the good things that we want to look about ourselves it's the things that we're scared to look about with inside ourselves and once we do it we can confess and admit that we are the issue. And thus, like you said, the kingdom of Kevin is inside of you. And once you see the hell, since we caught hell inside of ourselves, then when we admit and we confess, conf conf I mean, since God is inside of us, you talk to the throne that's sitting inside of our temple, that's sitting at the seat of our heart, that's sitting at a, the, the, the gut of our um, solar, I mean, I'm trying to get solar, uh, whatever. But uh, the look with inside ourselves, and once we do it, it is that's liberating us. And once we do it individually, we can start to show little fractals and, and, and we can externalize that. And people can see, like I've always emphasized, people can start seeing the examples. They can see that's being projected and people say, damn, and it's contagious. It doesn't like I always say a dog that shit fast don't last long, but people start to see it. And then it's a reciprocity. And then not just like I'm helping that person. 
that person sees that and they see me and they give it back to me. And then other people see it and then it blossoms. It blossoms, you know, like your Mississippi Exodus campaign, because mm -hmm. you're like you're the voice of it. You're the voice, and I, you know and that's why I, I love your fervor. I love your vigor, your determination, and your devotion and your passion. Despite all the odds that are against what you're trying to achieve, you're man. That's why I love what you do. I am I I I I I I, I, I revere your drive, your passion, your determination. Um, Angel Slump, no. Thank That's you. what would have, and I respect that. So, real quick, my thing is, um, just real quick, the liberation inside of ourselves first. Yes, sir. Um, and um, you know, uh, Sister Noble went through it. You went through it. Brother Tali went through it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I'm gonna get off the mic because I've been talking and what have you. Peace, y'all. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Brother Gary. So, on that note, I I really appreciate everybody. Uh, those who are watching this 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 live, uh, those in the, in the in the in the chat room, and even some of the even some of my semi trolls. I can't say that they are trolls, but like semi type trolls. Uh, thank them for being here. Of course, we'll simulcast on on Facebook, and uh, like I said, I appreciate it. It's, it's always an honor. Uh, this has been an, another good Soul Liberation Day number three. And we're looking forward to, to number four. Hopefully, number four, we can, uh, maybe this year, maybe we can accomplish a little something, something, even though we don't have nothing. Because if we if we can uh, if we can accomplish just a little something, something, it's still more than these other folks. They they got millions of dollars and thousands of subscribers, and they ain't accomplishing a damn thing. So at least we, we'll still be one step on, on above them. But uh, yeah, I thank you. I thank you very much. I also want to say, let me see, where's that comment at? Uh, this person here, where is it at? Balls deep, our friend Balls deep. I knew it like everyone else, nothing but talk and no direct solution. This is why I can't deal with people. Well, Balls deep, I'm sorry. We can't. Every time Dick and Harry, we can't go back and forth and explain uh, from from uh, what the Mississippi campaign is about. But here you are. You can go to Operation Exodus Mississippi channel. There it is, the link. You can even just look it up on YouTube. You can study the videos. If you want just a brief breakdown, there's a wonderful video by our brother Omar Shabazz. He broke it down in his video. Operation Exodus promo video that gives you a very short, brief breakdown of what the Mississippi campaign is about. If you don't want to go through all that drama, and then when you come here, now you got something to talk about. But if you think you're special, somebody's supposed to come. You come from out of nowhere. We're supposed to just all of a sudden just break, start talking and explain things to you. It's not going to happen. Been talking about this for what almost two years or whatever. You're not special. I'm not gonna take the time out of my day. It's been two hours. If you wanted to really talk about it, maybe you should have called came early or whatever. Go to Operation Exit Mississippi channel. Like I say, the short promotion of video give you a brief. What's the how the word synopsis? Synopsis. Synopsis. synopsis of what the what the Mississippi campaign is about, and you can go from there. Then when you come here, you can talk to me. Be educated. But see, like I said earlier in my talk, when Rashida was here, a lot of people come, they don't want to know nothing anyway. They just want to come here and harass you and stalk you and bother you. They really don't want to know nothing anyway. Because once you learn, what you going to say? Once I tell you what you going to say, that ain't going to work. That's what you going to say. That ain't going to work. That ain't, that's all you're going to say. I'm, why should I waste my time? You're not serious about nothing. Keep being the pathetic loser that you are. That's all I can tell you. The reason why you come here, because you do know that we got it going on. That's why you come here. And you hope. That's Alphon. Huh? That's yeah, Alphon. That's Alphon. 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 Yeah, that's Alphon. That's yeah. Alphon. That's yeah. Alphon. Everybody knows. <laughs> yeah. And why, why, why do men with small penises always have to reference like they have a big penis? <laughs> that is so hilarious. <laughs> like, they always have to reference their penis. Why do you have to do that? Like, just stop. That's so immature. 
Yeah. Get a light. You're creepy. You're stalking. Like, just, why? You're, you're negative. You're the negative one. We're doing some positive mm. here. Stop coming here, disturbing our live stream. <laughs> the weird and creepy like Umar Johnson. <laughs> She's a like, creepy like Stop Umar Johnson. Stop coming here bothering us. Yeah. Take for them Becky Sue's. Yeah, for real. Go to them white girls' live streams, Alquan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted. That's all right. It's okay. <laughs> I know what I told you. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> but on that note, I want to thank my sister Karen. Just finished talking. Uh, You're my welcome. Sis my sister Noah here. Okay. Brother Talib. Are uh, you welcome? Yes, sir. Uh, Brother Gary, of course. And uh, thank y'all for making this a great celebration day. Uh, and we'll hopefully we'll be back here next year. And maybe we can get, it'll be a brand new year. Maybe folks might start waking up and say, maybe they got something going on here. Because uh, these other things, I'm not trying to make marketing or nothing. They're just not getting you nowhere. Or maybe they'll be an all right, all out civil war. Yeah. Man, we don't know. Never know. See, and you're not in a position. <laughs> if this country broke out into some kind of civil war, or whatever, we we would be the first casualties because we don't have, we can't defend, we can't do nothing. We have no safe haven. We have nothing. We just be easy to be, get picked off. But it's our, it's your choice. Keep voting and marching and building African schools or all these million dollar businesses when these. When these races got trillion dollar businesses and you know whatever, yeah. So you know you don't have no kind of power. You got to get some kind of power. Until you get some power, you're done. It's a done deal. But on that note, thank you again. Shout out. Thank you YouTube. Thank you Facebook for giving me this privilege. Got to give shouts out to YouTube and Facebook. YouTube food. I'm putting my videos back up. You know, made them mad. So I gotta give props to YouTube. I gotta give it props. I don't, you know, YouTube do trip, but they on this day, but I know they kept, you know, they they mess folks up on this one. They put the videos right back up. Channel still here. So on that note, we are the five thousand, as Don Cornelius always used to say, as in pardon. I'm Angel Snub Number Seven, Sister Noble Levine, and as Brother to live. Sister Karen. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, we, we, we appreciate you coming on also, Sister Karen. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. And uh, until next time, y'all, I wish us love, peace, and so we are. Good night. Good night.